Thank you, Glenn. My name is Maya, and I'm a very grateful alcoholic. I am an alcoholic of the hopeless variety. Um, thank you for asking me, Glenn. I met you on my first birthday, and um, we did the spiritual roadmap. You came to the meeting I was co-hosting, and and that for me that was um, that was a memory that I'll carry with me for forever. You know that was a that was a part of my recovery. That was a turning point for me. You know, going through that spiritual roadmap and going through the, the parts in the book, and you know, looking at looking at the on awakening, and I kind of really. It gave me a structure for my day, so I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, so yeah, my name is Maya. I am a grateful, grateful alcoholic. It's so good to be here today. Um, yeah, um, you know, I have no idea what I'm, I'm going to say. I um, I woke up this morning, and I um, for the past couple of days have been in a lot of pain. I've been in a lot of pain. I'm 19 months sober, and um, you know it's it's. I think this month has just been really really difficult for me. Um, so yeah, my name is Maya. I'm an alcoholic. I came into the rooms, came back into the rooms, on the 15th of May, 2022, and by the time I came in, I was broken. I was broken. I was battered. I had no more will in me to drink, you know, I had literally, you know, the alcohol had consumed my life, it had taken away everything from me, and, you know, I tried to get sober for 12 years, in and out, in and out of the rooms, and I... I didn't want I didn't want to be sober. I didn't want to be like you guys. I had no acceptance, you know. And the day that I stopped drinking for me for me that was grace. It was nothing but grace. It was a power greater than me. Because I couldn't stop drinking on my own and there was no human power. Um, you know, and I came into the rooms, I came around here and I tried to please everybody. You know, I tried to please the family, the partner, my, my daughter. I tried to stop for every single person that I love so much in my life. And I just couldn't do it. So when I came in here, I was literally, um, yeah, I, I, I had no choice. You know, alcohol had beat me to, alcohol convinced me, you know, alcohol convinced me that the the more I keep digging this rock bottom, the more I keep digging, you know, eventually I will end up digging my grave because the consequences just got worse and worse and the drinking the, the drinking became, you know, so bad. I was a blackout drinker. I was a blackout drinker and I drank because I loved the effect that alcohol produced. And by the time I'd come in, the alcohol, for me, was a was a way for me to shut down, you know, a way for me just to shut down. Because now I know that it's the thinking, my thinking is the problem, and I use alcohol to black out and to shut down. So yeah, um, I was born I was born in London. I was born in London. I've lived in London all my life. As a child. Um, you know, I had very strong emotions as a child. I was very needy. I, 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 I was, I was, a, you know, I was addicted to my mum's love. I just wanted her love so much. And I remember the first, the first time I actually felt fear was when she left me. She left me with my grandparents, and um, she took my older sister and my brother with her. And I woke up in the morning and she wasn't there. And I, I must have been about three years old. But I could remember it. I really could remember it. I remember standing by the window, looking out the window. And, you know, my grandmother said, because it was snowing outside. And she was trying to take my mind off it. And, and, I, and I remember that day so clearly. And, 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 and the memory I have from that was 
why did she take them and not me? What is wrong with me, you know? And from then, I felt that sense of abandonment because I thought, oh my God, what is wrong with me? Um, they came back, they came back and, you know, my childhood, you know, I, my mum loved me, I know that today, you know, and then, um, you know, I, I grew up with my, my, my sister and my brothers and I, throughout my childhood, I always, I kind of always looked at my sister and I thought, what has she got that I haven't got, you know, because the second time my mum left me, they, um, they moved, they bought, um, like, we call it a post office, right, so they bought a post office, and there was a, they, there was a flat at the top, and she left me again, stay with my grandmother, and she took to my older brother and my older sister, and again, those feelings of, why, why has she left me, what is wrong with me, you know, and from a very, very early age, I felt, I felt low self-worth, I had that fear of abandonment, I had that feeling of I wasn't loved, um, and I carried that with me, I carried that with me for a really, really long time, you know, those, those feelings manifested inside me, and, um, you know, by the time I was in my teens, you know, I was, I was a very, very insecure girl, and, um, I I always seeked external things to make me happy. You know, and I remember when I first found alcohol and drugs and I thought, Oh, this made this makes me feel really good, like like I feel normal. Maybe I can be like my sister, maybe I can you know, and and, and everything that she did, I mimicked her, I copied, I just wanted to be just like her because deep down in the core of me there was something wrong with me you know there was something wrong with me and um you know this went on and as i got slightly older i met i met my um my daughter's dad when i was 16 so 28 years ago i met him and you know he kind of introduced me to that to that material world you know the material world he had money he was well he was well off you know and and he was giving me everything i wanted you know and i thought oh, this is what i'm missing this is the love that i'm missing like this man loves me so much you know and it was the clothes the money the car and um that's when I started seeking external things, like it became more of a, it became more of a thing to me, you know, I had to have the, 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 the nice shoes and the nice handbag and the nice everything, you know, and it made me feel better, and it made me feel good about myself for a split second, um, you know, and, 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 and life kicked in, and, you know, he was the, he was the love of my life, and, um, you know, I, um, I, I was at university, I was quite a very, very intelligent girl, you know, I studied computer science, I went to university, I, 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 um, you know, I taught, I, I taught computer science, I taught graphics design, I was, I was really like, I was earning a lot of money, you know, I was earning a lot of money, and at that point, I had arrived, because I had my own money, you know, I didn't have to, I didn't like, the boyfriend didn't have to get me what I wanted, I could just go out and get it myself, and, and literally, like, I really painted the town red, I did, you know, and with a drink inside me, I could go out, I could talk to, I could talk to anyone, I could dance on the dance floor, I could get high, and, you know, there were times where I'd left the club not knowing who I was with, so I put myself in in, in, in in very dangerous situations, you know, because once I put a drink inside me, I cannot stop drinking. And that has always been the case. So, um, yeah, I had arrived. I had arrived. I had a good job. I was doing really well, you know, and um, I fell pregnant. 
I fell pregnant and I um, I remember thinking what am I going to do with this baby like I was so you know like I just I just wanted like, like you know like the drive for success was on I wasn't ready to have a child and that caused relation the problems in my relationship and you know I was just yeah, I was I, I I I was I was very very egotistical. I was very I was very prideful, you know. And it was all about me. It was all about what I wanted. And um, eventually, I left home. Eventually, I left home, and that was the that was the third time that my family abandoned me. You know, they didn't agree with my life choices, and um, they didn't like the person that I was. I was settling down with, um, and my family, my family disowned me. Sorry, one second. Ashante, can you answer that at all, please? Because I, I can't. Sorry, one second. Wow, that was loud. Yeah. So at this point, I left home. My family didn't want to know me. I was drinking around the clock, and. Um, again I felt abandoned I was on my own and I literally sat in this flat and I drank I drank every single day I drank around the clock I have no idea who it was going to be okay I'll be open soon all right I'm just on a meeting no it's not it's not him all right no no I'm I'll be with you soon okay so yeah, so I, I, I sat there and I drank and I literally drank round the clock, you know, um, 24 hour binges, couldn't stop drinking, um, the relationship got very, very toxic, the relationship got really, really toxic and, and at this point my drinking was out of control, my drinking was out of control, there were, you know, there were fights in the scrumptious apartment that we had, you know, we had a really nice apartment and 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 things were really really they were getting really nasty and um you know um my drinking i see i blamed everyone for my drinking you know it was my family they abandoned me it was my sister it was it, it, it was it was my partner i blamed everybody for my drinking i was full of anger and resentment i hated the world and um I continued drinking and then I fell pregnant again I fell pregnant again and um, this time you know the drink had had really taken over me and I thought okay this, this baby this baby's gonna fix me you know I, I'm, I, I never have to drink ever again this child is gonna be the one that is gonna save me from from this you know I, I need love this is what I'm missing you see I need love. Nobody loves me, you know. Poor me. Look how they're treating me. And um, I remember, I remember going into work, and 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 I managed to stop drinking. I managed to stop drinking, and I wasn't drinking, and I was, I felt on top of the world. I actually felt on top of the world, and I remember going into work, and I remember my my, my boss saying to me, "My, you look really good. You look really well, you know, because I'd stopped drinking." stop drinking and you know he's like oh, I, I, I probably was about seven months pregnant and it's like you look really really well and you look really happy you see because I was I, I was that person that just used to walk around with the with the weight of the world on our shoulders and I went home and you know I was just really I was on a high and I thought yep yeah, this is it now this is it you know um and yeah Lo and behold, I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move. And I was bleeding out all over the floor. I was going into labour. And I, um, yeah, and that was the day that, you know, my, my world came crashing down. I remember having to crawl to get the phone to call the ambulance I remember laying on the floor 
and um, I got to the hospital. I got to the hospital, and this, at this point, I was, you know, I was I was ready to to to, to have the baby, and um, you know, seven months but seven months pregnant, the baby was, you know, it was a it was a baby, and um, so I'm there, and I'm like, what's going on, like? What 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 are you doing? Like, like you're having a baby. And I was like, no, stop it. Like, why, can't, why can't you stop this? Why can't you stop it? He's not ready to come out. So I'm having to give birth to this child, right? I'm having to give birth to this child, and 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 I'm full of fear. I'm full of fear. I'm on my own, and I'm thinking, please God, you know, please God, this was like my lifeline, you know, and. Um, the baby's born and the baby's breathing. So I said to the doctors, like, what now? Like, what happens now? And they're like, you know, do you want to hold? Do you want to hold your son? And I was like, yeah, but he needs he needs support. He needs help to breathe. Like, what are you what are you doing? And they were like, we're really sorry. And in that moment. I just, I don't know, I think, I, I think my heart just stopped, my heart just stopped, and my whole world came crashing down, and she said to me, would you like to hold your, your, your baby, so I'm sitting there now, and I'm holding this little, I'm holding this little boy, and he just looks perfect, he looks perfect, and I think, yeah, I um I had to wait. I had to wait for him to stop breathing, you know. And at that point, it was the it was oh it was just the worst, you know. At that point, there was no God. There was no God. And you know. My life came crashing down, you know, I'm supposed to leave the hospital with a child, with a car seat, and I'm going home with a box. So, yeah, so after that, I, 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 you know, my drinking, my drinking really was out of control, and I drank, and I drank to get drunk, I drank to oblivion, I drank because I didn't want to live. And at the same time, my dad was drinking, and my and and you know, at this point, I was just powerless. I was drinking against. Like once I put a drink inside me, they were, I was just off. I was just off. You know, there was nothing that could stop me from drinking. I pushed everybody away. So I'm sitting in this flat. I'm sitting in this flat, and I've come back from the hospital, and I'm looking at the floor. Right where I was bleeding. And it's all been cleaned, you know. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, shit, like what the fuck has just happened? So yeah, so I drank, I drank alcoholically, um, shut myself down. I shut myself from the world, didn't want to know anybody. And, um, you know, I just, I didn't want to live. And things got really, really bad. The, the relationship got really, really toxic. And, you know, I, I attempted to take my own life, you know, but um, God had other plans for me. And, um, you know, all I could think was, why me? Why me? Why me? And at this point, I still, like, my family was still very much, like, out of the picture. And, um, and a couple of years later, I fell pregnant again with my daughter absolutely petrified but this time you know I was I was I was doing the whole dry drunk thing you know I could stop for, for a period of time but you see my problem was I couldn't stay stopped I couldn't stay stopped and um, I, I fell pregnant with, with, with my daughter she came early too she came early too and you know I didn't drink for about six months and then that lurking notion, that lurking notion that, you know, wouldn't it just be all right just to have one drink? You know, just one drink. 
would hurt. It really wouldn't hurt. Just one drink. I've been through so much. Like I'm got at this point. I'm going through post traumatic stress disorder. I'm going through a very very toxic, very very toxic domestic violence situation. I'm. I've got this baby, premature baby who, like, I don't know. Like, I can't sleep at night just in case she stops breathing, right? And I've got, I've got this man living with me who, I, I really, he was, he, he was a monster, right? So um, I'm like, okay, like, just one drink, just one drink, will make it all better. I can just. I haven't had a drink for like, I don't know, like a, a year, just one drink, and boy, that one drink, it took me out for years, you know, and um, the thing is, you know, I said I'm, 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 I'm powerless over alcohol, once I put a drink inside me, it sets off, it sets off that phenomenon of craving, yeah have a thinking problem, you see the world has wronged me, I'm here with this premature baby, I don't know what to do with her, you know, usually your mum would come round, wouldn't she, and she'd say, oh, this is how you change a nappy, this is how you bath your child, this is how you, and I remember saying, God, I don't know how to be a mum, I don't know what to do with this child, what do I do with this child, how do I look after this child? You know, and the and, and 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 the partner that I hated so much. I hated him so much at the time, and every time I got drunk, he would take the baby from me. And that just became a normal thing, you know, taking the baby and and literally just ripping ripping me into pieces. Um, but today I know different. You see, so today I know that that that. He was saving her from me. He was saving that little girl from me, saving her from the trauma. So, um, yeah, at that point, I couldn't stop drinking. And then I'd get her back. And then, you know, I would I would need a drink. And I'd go out in the car with, 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 with her in the back seat. And I'd only just want a couple just want peace and quiet and I just want to have one drink you know I fell asleep with her in the car powerless powerless there were many many instances where I put her life at risk you know we used to live in a, a, a tall block building and I used to you know go out in the middle of the night and leave her there. I needed a drink. I couldn't stop. I could not stop. And I couldn't shut down the thinking until I, and, you know, there was no human power, right? There's no, there was no human power. And I remember she used to beg me, she'd say, Mommy, please don't drink today. Please, no yucky drink today. And I'd be like, just the one, baby, just the one. And that's when her nightmare would start, you know. And at this point, I think at this point, you know, alcohol became my master. You know, alcohol became my master. It had control of me. I, like, I literally sold my soul to the devil. I was not in control, you know. And I came back in the rooms. I came back in the rooms and you guys told me, Do you know what? You can't take the elevator, you know. I tried to find an easier, softer way. You need to take the steps. You need to take the stairs. And I was in and out again, in and out like a yo-yo. And um, I, um, May the 15th, May the 15th, 2022 was the last time she was taken from me. It was the last time she was taken from me. By the time she, she was taken from me, she was a very traumatised little girl. Very, very traumatised little girl. And at this point, the fight I had to use fighting. You see, I used to fight her dad to get her back. Because he was the problem. She was, she was safer with me, you know? He was the problem. So it'd be the last time that he um, that he took her, 
And that day, that was the day of grace. Because that day, something happened to me. And I can't explain it, and I don't know what happened, but something happened to me. And I just knew that I didn't want to drink anymore. And I knew that I just didn't know how to stop. I didn't know there was a solution. And I came into the rooms. And at this point, I had no relationship with God. I had no relationship with God. No, I, I, I lost my dad to liver cirrhosis. Could it didn't stop me from drinking. I had no, there was no God in my life. I knew there was something out there, you know, and it was only until I came into the rooms and I thought, you know, I remember, m remember my sponsor saying to me, you know, are you willing to believe? I was willing to do anything. I was willing to believe the sky was pink if, you, if that meant it was going to keep me sober. Because, you see, I can't be told what to do, and this time I wanted to stay sober. I did not want to drink again. You know? And at this point, I mean, I, look, I, I literally looked like I was on death's door. I was unrecognisable to everybody I knew. I, um, yeah, I, 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 I just did not want to drink anymore. So I found myself a sponsor. But, you know, I didn't understand what was wrong with me. I didn't understand what was wrong with me until I picked up that book. And I started reading with my sponsor. And the sponsor told me that I've got twofold disease of mind and body. I'm powerless. I had to look at my life and look at every single time that I put myself and I put my child and I put my family out, you know, in danger, in harm's way. I did all those filthy, dirty, nasty things. I was, I was, I was such a, I was not in control. I had to learn why, why this was happening to me. You know, I have a disease. I have a disease, and and and. I suffer from a spiritual malady and, and remember what I talked about when, when I was young and I had that feeling of fear and abandonment and low self worth and, and you know, I'm 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 not good enough. I am not good enough. And that was imprinted in my skull. I am not good enough. And throughout the relationship that I had with my daughter's dad over the last 28 years, um, it kind of was imprinted in my head that I was not good enough, you know. So I had I had a lot of work to do, you know. But before I before I did that, I had to surrender. I had to surrender. And um, I remember getting on my knees, you know, because at this point I'm offering myself to God, you know, to do with me as he, as he will. Relieve me of the bondage of me, you see, because it's always been about me. It's my as well. Why, why are you not do? Why are you not playing by the script? Why are you not, you know, giving me everything that I need to be happy? You know, I had to. I had to learn that. I needed to get off that throne that I've been sitting on. I had to... I had to give myself. I had to give myself to God. You know? And I had to... I had to keep seeking this power. And every day, I saw these little, little miracles. I saw these little, little miracles. And, you know, I think, wow, is that odd or is that God? You know? And slowly and slowly, the, the obsession, I was waking up in the morning and I wasn't turning around and looking for a bottle to pick up and drink. But it usually happens, like stacked up beside my, my bed. And um, I wasn't doing that. And even though, you know, I was sober and there were still arguments in the house and it was still toxic and it was still abusive and it was everything... My daughter was in trauma. She would scream for hours. 
and something. Somehow I found that cause button. Somehow I found that cause button where I could just stop and pray. I would stop and I would pray. I never used to get on my knees, but I started getting on my knees and, 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 I, and I found that when I got on my knees, I had this, this sense of peace that I've never known. You know, I had this sense of peace that I never known. And, and then, you know, I went through my step four with my sponsor, you know, uncover, discover, discard. And there was things that I had to disconnect from, you know. I had to disconnect. I had to disconnect from the people, the things that were disrespectful, that had been disrespectful to me. I had to disconnect. Because there were people that caused me harm. And I had to disconnect. But at the same time, you know, I remember someone said to me, um, make a list of all the people that you've ever known in your life. All right? Make a list of all the people you've ever known in your life. And beside it, if they have disturbed you in any way, put a tick beside their name. And you know, every single person that has come into my life is disturbing me because I am disturbable. I am disturbable. You know, so I had to really look at myself. Where was I selfish? Where was I dishonest? Where was I inconsiderate? Me inconsiderate? Me dishonest? No. And 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 it wasn't until I did my fifth step that I had that that second spiritual awakening. You know, like I had that moment where I thought, oh my God, alcohol is not my problem. My problem is me. My problem is my thinking. My problem is how I look at the world. I look at the world through my defects, through fear, through, 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 through anger, through resentment. You know, I'm literally driven by fear on a daily basis. I need to get up in the morning and and, and hand it over. You know, and um, when I did that fifth step, I remember leaving leaving my sponsor, and you know, I and, and at this point I haven't had a drink or. I think it's been about six months. So I've left her and um, I've got on a train from Leeds to London. And I'm sitting there and, and, and something's just come over me. And you've got about 20 football, like soccer fans, 20, 25. They've come onto the train, cases and cases of beer. They've just come back from a football match. They're all laughing, they're all joking, they're drinking, they're all drunk. And I'm sitting there, just done my fifth step. No desire to drink grace. No desire to drink. I could not. Do you know, I didn't even, I didn't even switch on until I got off the train. And they were serving alcohol on the train. They had a section, you know, you'd walk down the train, they had the tables and everything, and, you know, you could sit on them. They had a, and there was no desire to drink. No desire to drink. And I thought, wow. I thought, wow. You know, and, um, yeah, I... Um, I had to be willing. I had to be willing to have 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 my defects removed, and I and I didn't want to make amends to certain people, you know. But I had to pray. I had to pray, and I had to try to make amends. And 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 for me, that was that was a freeing. You know, I I think I found freedom. You know, I didn't know that 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 working this program was a pathway to freedom. You know, a soul cleansing. A soul cleansing process has been for me, you know, a soul cleansing process um, and a pathway to freedom where I could walk now with my head held high. I could walk with dignity for the first time in my life. I could look you in the eye, you know. I could apologize for the wrongs I had done, you know, and I just felt that peace come over me. And then I found out that, you know what? In order to keep this, I've got to give it away. 
and I've got to watch myself every single day and life has been shitty, it hasn't been kind, you know, but I don't think I could drink no matter what, coming to these rooms, I've got the most amazing friends, the most amazing people in my life that I can call when I'm feeling down, you know, and we'll read a paragraph together, or we'll, 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 we'll share our experience, strength and hope, and do you know what, just instantly just instantly and you know coming back to like I have to I have to give it away to keep it I do a lot of service on Zoom I do a lot of service on Zoom I I, I, I chair a meeting on um, on Tuesday lunch times UK time um, Wednesdays and Saturday evenings or UK open lounge I'm a speaker seeker I um, I do a lot of service for open lounge I, I try to help as many people as possible, you know, and, and, and when I'm being disturbed and when I'm disturbable, I have to try to turn my attention to someone I can help. I have to, and even though, like, I've, I've been, I've read, I read through the book and, I, I, and I've done the work, but for me, the work is never done. You know, I have a spiritual advisor today and I'm reading with him and I'm having a totally new experience, you know, I have a sponsor, you know, it's, it's just, this for me, you know, my daughter now, she, I take her to the studio, she's, she's into her dance and her singing, she, um, over the Christmas, she, she sang, she had a concert in the church hall, and she sang, and it was just so beautiful, and look at that, Grace, being sober, I can be a mum, you know, I take her to the studio, she dances around the flat, she sings, you know, and um, this used to be the little girl that used to wake up in the middle of the night, screaming, traumatised, and she didn't know if mummy was dead or alive, mummy was still breathing, and that little girl knows my breath. She knows when I'm pretending to go to sleep and she knows when I'm actually sleeping, you know. And, um, you know, today, like, that toxic relationship that I was in, you know, we we now, we're co-parenting, we, we're under the same roof and there's no police knocking on the door. There's no plates being smashed. There's no, there's, there's none of that. There's no screaming, there's no baby crying, there's no trauma, there's no... And that is a miracle, I never thought that that could happen. And, and you know, it, it was on the condition that you can have your daughter back, but I'm going to be there as well. She come, I come with her. And, um, you know, I... I, 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 I I have slowly just started to discover myself again, you know, and like, you know, where like before the drive for success was on and, and, and you know, I'm actually really qualified and, 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 and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get sober and I wanted to help other people, you know, but now I'm starting to, I'm starting to, 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 to do things in, in my expertise, my area of expertise that I like, like my creative side's coming back, you know, I used to be very creative, now my creative side's coming back and I'm able to, to work on projects that are absolutely, like, they, they lift me, they really, really lift me and, um, you know, I, I have a beautiful relationship with my sister today. I have an amazing relationship with her, you know, and um, she's just she's just the best. She's the best. Like, I'm not jealous of her today, you know. I love her. Like, I'm so proud of her. I used to look at her and think, why is she not like me? Why is this? Why am I the alcoholic? Why can she drink safely and I can't? Why can't I drink like her, you know? And on Christmas, I went round to hers for Christmas dinner, and she has a bar in her house, right? She ha actually has a bar in her house. Now, 
if I'm in fit spiritual condition, it doesn't bother me one bit. But if I'm not, and I'm not working my program, I'm not connected to a power greater than myself, and I'm not, I'm not doing this daily surrender, and I'm, I, 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 and I'm not in my head because it's my thinking that will lead me to a drink. The bottle won't come to me, it won't walk to me, it's my thinking that will take me to that bottle. So today I have to make sure that, you know, I'm connected. When things crop up, when things get hard for me, when things get tough for me, I have to pick up the phone and I have to reach out. I have to speak to someone, I have to throw myself into service. And, um, you know, I, um, I got, a, I got a message at six o'clock this morning actually and it was a girl and she was like my what time zone are you in and I, I said I'm in the UK where are you she's like oh same and and she said to me she's like I need help I can't stop drinking and it's like I keep coming back it's like no one wants to work with me my sponsors keep leaving me because I end up going back out there and you know what, for me, for me, I was so grateful that she messed That was God. Because I told her I was just like you. I was just like you. And I, no one could get me sober. No one could get me sober, you know. That was grace. I, I, that was a power. I have a power in my life today. I have an amazing power in my life today that, you know, I know that, 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 that God loves me. I've got a loving God that wants the best for me. I don't know what, I don't know what is best for me. And sometimes I have to sit through that pain because God doesn't want me to have that because that is not good for me, you know. Sometimes I want something. I'll take my daughter out to the supermarket and she'll be like, Mummy, I want that. And I'm like, no, you can't have that. You're not old enough, or that's not that's not for you. And yesterday, I had to sit through things. I had to sit through things, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, God, why are you taking me through these rough waters? Why? Why are you taking me through the valley? Why are you taking me through these rough waters? And when the head quietens down, and I close my eyes, and I meditate, and I think, he knows what's best for me, you know, and where else to go than to get through these, 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 these times and, you know, I was in so much pain and I sat with it for days and what did I do? I don't know why I didn't, but today I got on my knees and it just lifted me to a place to a place, you know, and um, I'm so grateful. I don't need the, the nice clothes, the car, the, the house, the money. I don't need to be showered with gifts today. I don't need all that stuff, you know. I don't need that material world. It means nothing to me. It means absolutely nothing to me. You know, this is everything for me, you know, and... Um, I love this program. I love the people in this program. I meet the most amazing, the most amazing, bravest, bravest people that have gone through so much. You know, people that have been at death's door, that have been saved. You know? And if you are new, this disease doesn't leave you and it doesn't get any better, it gets worse, you know, until it gets to a point that it will take you out and I've seen it take out so many people. So, yeah, if you are new and if you are struggling, reach out, pick up the phone. Anyone, anyone will be so happy to take your call. See, I used to think I was a burden, you know. And when newcomers call me, it just lights up my day. Like, wow, two days, three days. 
couldn't go two minutes. Couldn't go two minutes without a drink. No, I'm so grateful and um, thank you so much, Glenn, for asking me. I'm so grateful for this experience and um, with that, I will definitely come back. God bless everybody. Thank you.